It's my privilege and honor to be with you today. And get to share the word of God with you. I know some of you might not know me, so I brought my family picture so you can know who I am. So my name's Leah Kong. And I think you know my uh, lovely husband Mara Kong. <laughs> Today is my privilege to talk to you about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, "Come and follow me." I believe you're all here because you want to follow Jesus. You know, it's very interesting when Jesus tells us, uh, the Bible tells a story about Jesus picking his disciples. He said, come, follow me. And they did. They left their job, they left what they were doing, and they went after Jesus. Why did they do that? There was something special about Jesus. There's something different about Jesus. I just tell you, he's the greatest man that ever lived. And he's Asian. I like Asians. I love Jesus. And I love that Asian man over there. But he was Asian. He came from Israel. And his disciples were so fascinated by him. They wanted to follow after him and become like Jesus. And they followed him for three years. But they didn't stop there. They followed him his whole, their whole life. And that's what we're supposed to do. We just don't follow him for a couple years. We follow him for our whole life. And we become more like Jesus day after day, month after month, year after year. And in John, uh, sorry, in John 10, 27, Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow. And so I have to ask, are you following Jesus? Let me put it another way. Who's driving your moto? Or your car? Is that Jesus in the front or you? A lot of times you see people, they're driving and Jesus is on the back of the moto trying to hang on to them. He said, follow me. He's the driver. We're behind him. We're following after him. If you don't know about Jesus clearly, let me tell you. I've been following Jesus a long time and I've never been disappointed. He's the best person in the world you could ever follow. Okay, number two. You need to know and follow his teachings. 
Young snap tam and young corrupt tam, but when she goes to the bong rian bong. How can you follow him if you don't know what he says? The young dao tam bong jang, but by young at the top on ban me prabantu of a clap on nung. Read your Bible. And prakumpi. And read what he said. Hi, an, hi, sin chunk it on pi away that throw me in prabantu. You know, whenever I'm discouraged in my life. I've been crying. I feel hopeless. I just go to John 14, 15 and read the words of Jesus. Their life. They give me power to live. They comfort my soul. Read the words of Jesus. Well, read the whole Bible. Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, Don't think that I came to do away or undo the law or the prophets, but I came to fulfill it. See, the whole Bible talks about Jesus. You have to study it. In John 8, 31, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, then you are really my disciples. He said it again in case we missed it. <laughs> John 14, 15, he said, If you love me, keep my commands. He said it again, John 14, 23, Anyone who really loves me will obey my teachings. How can you know God's word? Study. So, thankfully, the church has classes for you. How many of you have heard of our LG classes, the Life Guidelines? Anybody? Yeah, okay. Transform life, disciples' life, servants' life. Those are all there to teach you what God said and to help you understand what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. But don't stop there. Maybe you say, oh, I've been a Christian a long time. I did those classes. Well, we have more. Maybe you heard of the School of Ministry. You can study those classes. They teach you the doctrine of God and how to follow Him clearly. How many of you like a challenge? Maybe not. <laughs> I like to challenge myself and I like to challenge my family. So I had the challenge to read the New Testament in 30 days. You know how long it takes you every day? Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. <laughs> Maybe you think, oh, I can't read the Bible. I can't read the New Testament in one month, 30 days. Okay, how about one hour, and then you can read the New Testament in two months. My son, Joshua, who I think is not here, uh, he took the challenge. He actually decided he's going to read the whole Bible. 
got a box that reads the Bible to you in the States, and he started listening to the Bible. He's somewhere in Leviticus, I think. <laughs> but Anna took the challenge. She read through the whole New Testament. And then she's like, well, I guess I better start with the Old Testament. Now she's reading through the Old Testament. See, the thing is, we think the book is really big. But let me ask you, what do you do with your time? Facebook? Shopping online? <laughs> Candy Crush, Lang Game, TV, Motutu, Sleeping, We all have time. But we have to decide I want to know God more. I want to study the Bible. I've been a Christian for 30 years following Jesus. But let me tell you, it will not happen unless you make it happen. Never do I think, oh, I think I should spend a couple hours studying the Bible by accident. I wish it worked that way, but it doesn't work that way. You have to make a decision to study the Word of God, to come to a class, to grow and learn more about the Bible. But let me tell you something. The goal isn't to know God's Word. The goal is to know Jesus and to know his ways so we can become like Jesus. The Bible warns us in James 1.22. Don't merely listen to the word and fail to internalize its meaning and deceive yourself, but do what the Bible says. You know, some people say it's hard to understand the Bible. I don't think it's that hard to understand the Bible. But it's hard to do what it says sometimes. Forgive. Love your enemies. If somebody hits you on the cheek, give them the other cheek. Pray for those who persecute you. Those are the words of Jesus. Those are hard to do sometimes. But God has help for us. Okay, number three. Don't stop learning or growing in God. Hebrews 10.24 says, Let us consider how may we encourage one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our meeting together as some is in the habit of doing, but to encourage each other. It's so important that we gather together. I know we have COVID. <laughs> Not talking about COVID. <laughs> but we need to gather together with each other. Encourage each other. Pray for each other. Join a small group. 
That's where you're going to find people that love Jesus like you. We can encourage each other and grow together in God. I think someone has a picture to show you. So in 1932, there's a young lady who's 24 years old. This is 1932, and if you know anything about 1932, it wasn't common for young women to go to Bible school. Her father wasn't very happy. <laughs> he wanted her to be an engineer. <laughs> the lady on the left, Lily Ann, is my grandma. That's before she passed away. You know that she went to Bible school but she still read her Bible every day. And she told me, Leah, you know, I read the Bible today. I read something new, something I'd never seen before. She was 89. We have that picture. Picture is there, not there. There. See what she's carrying? It's her Bible. She went to church as long as she could walk, and she read her Bible every day. And she followed Jesus until she was 89 and died and went to heaven. But she never said, Oh, well, I know enough about Jesus. She didn't decide to stop reading her Bible because she knew it all. Okay, number four. To be a disciple, you need to have a disciple like Jesus. Can you put the picture of my family back up? I have three disciples. Naomi, Anna, and Josh. Actually, we lost Naomi. She's now off in the States, so I still have two disciples. <laughs> you know, they see me every day. They see me following Jesus. They see it when I do it right, and they see it when I do it wrong. Having a disciple shows me where I'm not following Jesus. I realize, oh, I need more fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and faithfulness and self-control. Get some more. <laughs> <laughs> we need these in our life. See, we need the Holy Spirit. This is the verse, uh, number five, be full of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to make the fruit of the Spirit in our life. We need more of Jesus in our life. We need to be more like Jesus. And the way we do that is having more of the Holy Spirit work in our life. In Matthew 28:20, 20, Jesus said, 
Go into all the world and teach them to obey what I have commanded you. You know, we are supposed to share Jesus with people. We need to tell people. But most people are a little bit shy. Maybe afraid of what people might think of them. But Acts 1.8 gives us the answer. When you receive, Jesus said, you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that we're empowered to share Jesus with people. When you know Jesus and you follow Jesus and Jesus is working in your life, and when you're full of the Holy Spirit, and it's easier for you to share Jesus with people. I know a lot of you are praying for your family to get saved. Let me tell you a story about my uncle. He's 70-something. I think he's 75. Huh? And we prayed for him to know Jesus. Actually, he knew Jesus from young age. But he didn't follow Jesus. He didn't really understand what, who Jesus was. And we prayed, and we prayed. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. And we prayed. And about five years ago, he finally came to know Jesus. He was 70 already. And he came to know Jesus. And now he's following Jesus. So don't give up hope. Keep, keep praying faithfully for your family. And when you have opportunity to share with them about Jesus. But actually the biggest example you have is your own life. When your family sees that you have the fruit of the Spirit in your life, when they see you have love and patience and goodness, they say, oh, something's different about Leah. And they can see what Jesus has done in your life as you follow him and be his disciple. So we follow Jesus. Jesus is our example. I want to take you to Luke 4. There's a great verse, Luke 4, 1. It says, Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, and he left the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Maybe you know the story. Jesus was in the wilderness, fasting for 40 days, and was tempted by Satan. If you've never read the story, it's a very good story. You should read it. But he fought with Satan. And every time that Satan gave him, uh, said something to him, Jesus came back with the word of God. 
He used the sword of the spirit. He used the word of God to fight against the enemy. There's only one way for him to do that. He knew the word of God. And the story doesn't say he got out the Bible and found the verse. No, he knew it by memory. He knew the word of God and used it against Satan to say, no, you're wrong. This is what the word of God says. Now look at this, Luke 4, 14. In verse 13, he just finished his fight with Satan. And in case you didn't know, he won. And <laughs> verse 14, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Spirit when he went to the wilderness and when he came back, he was full of the Holy Spirit. Number six. Submit to God. Jesus was submitted to God. Maybe you know the story about Jesus when he was 12. He went with his parents to Jerusalem. His family went home from Jerusalem to Nazareth. And Jesus stayed there in Jerusalem. So Mary and Joseph went back to find their son. And they looked all over Jerusalem for three days. And they finally found Jesus in the church, in the synagogue. And they said, why did you do this to us, Jesus? <laughs> and Jesus just simply said in Luke 2, 49, I had to be about my father's business. In John 5, 19, Jesus says it again. He said, the son can do nothing of himself unless he sees the father doing it. Whatever he sees the father do, he does it in the same way. Jesus was submitted to God. James 4, 7 gives us this promise. Submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's what happened when Jesus was fighting Satan. Jesus was submitted to God. He used the word of God against the enemy. And Satan fled. This is your promise. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, be submitted to God. Follow God. Which means follow his teachings. Follow his ways. And then you resist the enemy. And the enemy has to go in Jesus' name. Number seven. Being a disciple is costly. It'll cost you something. 
Maybe you know this story in the Bible. You know the story of Lazarus raised from the dead. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And then in John 12, they tell us this beautiful, beautiful story of Mary. After Lazarus was raised from the dead, Mary came to Jesus. And she brought an expensive bottle of perfume. A pint of pure nar, which was very expensive, the Bible says. Maybe a year's worth of salary. And she came to Jesus. And she poured it on Jesus' feet. And then she took her hair and wiped his feet. And people were angry. Judas, Judas said, why'd she do that? That's expensive. Oh, we should have sold it and got the money for the poor. But we know the story that Judas's heart was wicked. It caused such a ruckus. Uh, such a problem. <laughs> People were coming to see Lazarus raised from the dead. And here's this woman who spilled this really expensive perfume all over Jesus. But Jesus said, it's a beautiful thing she did. She was worshiping Jesus. This is before the cross. This is her anointing Jesus who's going to die on the cross for her sins and all of our sins. There's an interesting verse just right after that. John 12, 9 and 10 said, So then, because of the large crowds that were following Jesus and coming to see Lazarus, the chief priest made a plan to kill Lazarus. ແລະຕ້ອງອັດຕະບັດກົມປີຢູຮານຈົມປູກ he rose from the dead and many people were saying, wow Jesus has the power over death Jesus has power of life these two verses show us that it's not always easy to be a disciple of Jesus. They, they mocked at Mary for pouring that perfume on Jesus' feet. They wanted to kill Lazarus again because he was causing many people to believe in Jesus. So I need to ask this question. What's the most costly thing that you could give Jesus? What's the 
I'm so thankful that we have freedom in Cambodia that no one's trying to kill us for believing in Jesus. You know, it's not that way in some countries. There's a lot of countries that you will get persecuted violently for believing in Jesus. But it, we have to ask the question, what's the most costly thing for us to give Jesus? Most people would say money. But I don't think that's it. I think the the rarest thing for us today to give to God is our time. The study the Bible. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, Oh, come to church. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, join small group. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, con tôi bắt chồng kia chụp chồng kia ăn miên pe lên nhom. And I get it. Ta nhom chốn lộc này. I'm the same. Nhom đôi kia đai. I'm busy. I have kids. I have to clean the house and do everything. Nhom miên cua sa để tới thay để sa. Chồng tôi riệp chăm tia sầm bay bay tất. But I think. It's very hard for us to give time to the Lord. Spend time with Him one on one, worshiping Him at home. And praying. And spending time in His Word. It's hard sometimes. But I think that is the most precious thing that we can give to God. Jesus said in Matthew 16, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life must lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. As I said, I've been a disciple of Jesus for 30 years. It's not always been easy. But Jesus has never disappointed me. The last point. Love God to love others. The love of God is the key for us. When when we worship God, when we get love from God, then it's easier for us to love others. John 13, 34 through 35. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I love you, so you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciple. I have one more story for you. You see, I wasn't a very good disciple of Jesus. There was a man that I hated. My mom and my father were divorced. And my mom remarried. And this man was her husband. His name was Joe. His name was Joe. 
And he loved to drink alcohol. He would drink and 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 pass out and then get up and drink some more. He used to hit my mom. He used to hit my brother. He tried to come after me to hit me. I hated him. I hated him. I hated him. There was not anything in me that loved this man. I hated him. Not the smallest piece of love in my heart for that man. So I did something bad. I prayed. Jesus, kill him. I'm serious. I'm telling you the truth. I prayed. Jesus, just kill him. Just kill him. Just take him out. Just kill him. But you see, I knew Jesus. I knew it was wrong. So I changed my prayer. I said, Jesus, I don't love this man. I hate this man. You have to give me love for this man. Because I don't have any love for him. And you know what the Holy Spirit did? He gave me love in my heart for that man. It wasn't me. It was supernatural. The love of God came into my heart to love this man that didn't deserve love. He gave me the ability to love him. And a couple years ago, I got a call from my mom. And my mom said he died. He away. And even then, I actually felt love in my heart for him. I still had love in there. I actually felt sorry for him that he passed away. That's Jesus. Only Jesus can do that. I wasn't following Jesus, but I asked him to help me. And he gave me love supernaturally by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm here as a testimony to you that God can do it for you too. God loves you. And God wants to give you the power of the Holy Spirit the same as He gave me. And to make you more like Jesus. To give you the power to do what's hard. And give you ability to love people that have hurt you. Let's stand. And Can you close your eyes and pray with me? Can you close your eyes and pray with me?
maybe as I shared my story, somebody came into your thoughts. Maybe it's not someone you hate, but somebody you have conflict with or feel frustrated with. God wants to help you. God wants to give you His love so that you can love others. Jesus said, this will show people who are my disciples. People that can love other people. Let's pray. Just cry out to God and pray for yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to be your disciples. We need your help to love people, Lord God, people that are unloving. Lord, we need your help, Lord God, to make us more like Jesus so that we can be an example to the world, so we can show people who Jesus is, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would help us, Lord God, in our weakness to be full of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Lord, we need your help. We thank you that you promised to help us, Lord God, this very But you sent the Holy Spirit to us to help us, to help us where we need help, and help us to become more like Jesus. God, we pray this week, Lord God, that people would be touched by your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you'd give them strength and health and that you'd bless them this week. Help them to show the love of Jesus to the world. In Jesus' name. Amen.